This next lesson that I'm going to share with you is, I think, a very easy introduction to doing abstract paintings. And in this case, semi-abstract. So if you're a teacher, I would recommend trying this with your students. I've had just wonderful success with it. And it's something we can all relate to, you know, grapes and wine. How, how much more beautiful is that? What I really like is that we're still working with a basic cruciform shape that touches the top, comes down to the bottom, touches the side, comes down to the other side. And then where these two shapes interlock is usually where your center of interest is developed. All the most interesting things happen in this area. And it's real easy. It's a combination of gauze, real leaves, ripped up napkins, a little color sanding, a little bit of everything. It's really a fun lesson. So I'm ready to get started. We're actually going to start with the napkins. So I, I went through some of my napkins and I picked out some napkins that had some writing on them. So I'll just pull these out right now. And then this is a little enru that had some stamping on it. Some lettering that you can't read, my favorite. And then these are some of the images that I thought I would combine in the lesson. And maybe these would help me decide which color dominance. I think I'm probably going to go for some purple and greens and yellow greens. And then for a little compliment, I'll add some yellows. And who knows, I might end up putting in some of these lovely checkerboards here. We'll see how that goes. Now, when you start working with napkins, these are not archival, so at the very end, we're going to have to spray this with an acrylic spray. And that will seal the napkins in, and it will make them archival. Almost all napkins come with a backing. So the hardest part of your whole day is going to be to peel the backing off of these. So to save a little time, I actually peeled the backing off some of these. And this one here, I wanted to show you a lovely little trick. I started it. Once you have it started, you can just peel it. There's usually about three layers on here. And one of the things that's really interesting is this beautiful ghost that you can get. So the image itself leaves a ghost, and I just love to use this in the transitional areas. So we'll talk more about that later. I'll put that aside. And now one of the things I want to do to get started is to draw a little shape. I find that the students can do a better job if they have some kind of a shape to work with. And I'm going to start by coming in with just a little shape over here, something coming down, and then I'm going to go across. And one should really check to see if this is really straight, but I'm just going to take a chance that it is. And I'm going to do a second shape over here, come down here. One of the things you can do is line up the edge of your ruler with the edge of your paper. And that kind of gives you some kind of order. Now I'm going to come down here. And this one is quite wide, so I'm going to make this one a little narrower. So I'm looking for as much variety as I can. So what we're going to do is just simply start with some of these images. And what I like to do is sometimes use the edge and sometimes just let this all be very ripped up and interesting. So let's start here. So we'll find this edge here and here. Now because this is only one layer, it's very easy to glue right through this. It's very porous. And I'm going to use some Yes paste that has been dissolved with quite a bit of water, so it's very thin. Can you see how thin that is? And what I like about this Yes Paste is the new Yes Paste now is acid free, and it does leave a completely workable surface. So if you just go in here and 
Look at that. Goes right through. Oh, this is so much fun. It penetrates right through this. Then I'm just going to do a little overlapping. I always wipe a little bit of the glue off. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this down here. And you can see I am picking up my edges here, but the rest of it is pretty random. And we'll just glue some of these pieces around to form a fun little thing. And I think what I'm going to do up here is glue it the opposite way. So I'll start up here and go outside of the shape. Grab a little bit more of this fun stuff and break out of the line here. So you don't have to stay in the line. That's the good news. The more you break out of the line, the better it is. And you can see how quickly this goes. It doesn't take all that long. And I don't worry if the napkin's upside down. That's kind of half the fun. And let's take some little pieces that'll take us right out here. Oh, that's good. That's an upside down glass. I like that. Now, if I want to, I could add some of this writing. I never stamp anything directly onto my paper. What I do is I just find some of this writing and then add it. And I love it when people can't read what this says. Now I think this would be good to be breaking out somewhere. I like to do this as a transitional piece. And remember those wonderful ghosts that we were talking about? These are the, the grapes that were the first layer beneath the image. I particularly like to put the ghost in what I call the transitional areas. These are the areas that are outside. And as you glue this down, you can see it looks like I took the time to draw this, when really it was just this simple little, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Person shouldn't have this much fun. Well, this is probably enough with the napkins, and now I'm going to dry this. And when I come back, we're going to wet this whole thing, and I'm real excited. I've got some actual grape leaves that I'm going to stamp on next. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're ready to continue here. These are dry. We're gonna do the next step is a basic underpainting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stamp some leaves. Now these are real grape leaves. And I just, oh, I just think they're so cool. So they really make a nice bridge between some of the images here. I usually remove the little stem because sometimes that will hold it up. And I think of these as arrows, so I don't want two arrows facing the same direction. I'll probably turn that one. And this is a lovely smaller sized leaf. I'll probably have this one coming into the picture. And this nice big one here, I'm going to design this one to be coming into the picture with part of it going off. And then this, my favorite leaves are the ones that little bugs have eaten holes in and they've been a little bit destroyed by nature. Love it. This one will overlap. So I think this is gonna work quite well. I try not to line them up, you know. That's not a good idea. Get rid of the stem. Oops, and we're all set. So I'll put this one up a bit. This one down a bit. Maybe this one. Well, as far over as I can go so they're not lined up. Good, we're ready to go. Now putting this on a flat surface and taking a flat brush, what I'm going to do is take some of my nice bright yellows and just, just try to capture the veins. So what I'm, I'm on the back of the leaf because the veins are more prominent there. And the reason I have this laying flat is because I want to go all the way to the edge of the leaf. If you're holding this in your hand, it's not, not that easy to do. And let's see, maybe I'll put just a little hint of a warm color on here. 
It's a little bit of my Quinn Coral. And then what I'm going to do is just set this down. And with the napkin, I'm going to press this in. Oh, perfect contact. Perfect. Here's another one. We're going to start with the yellow. And what I try to do is to keep this really rich with paint and not a lot of water. And then by holding the brush quite flat, I'm just picking up the veins. Now I'm going to put a little Quinn Gold on here. Not over the whole thing. And now just a little bit of this red. Again, not over the whole thing. Just a couple of strokes. I'll do that one. I'll turn this one now. <laughs> That's what's nice about being a gal. You can change your mind. Whoops. Be sure to press it down. Now I should tell you that these grape leaves were picked actually a long time ago. They've been in my freezer. They're going to work really well. But one thing that won't work is you can't go out and pick these and use them same day. It will not work. They're just way too um, curly. They won't, they won't lie flat. So I always try to freeze them. And oh, does that work nice. So you can see how quickly this part is going. I'm going to make them all with yellow. That way I don't have to think about, okay, did I make this one purple and this one green and this one pink and this one yellow? And I have to remember what's what. This one's going to go right off the top of the page. Now you want to get this to stick and to lie down as flat as you can. Okay, now I'm just going to keep my paper wet. So now I'm going to switch to my nice big one and a half inch brush. And starting with my same colors, I'm going to come in here and start doing a little underpainting. And one of the things I want to be sure that you do is to go outside the lines. Don't, don't let those lines inhibit you. It's very important to go outside the lines. Touch off the edge. If you put it on one side, bookend it to the other side, maybe go off the edge of the paper. You can paint on top of the papers if you want to. And I usually like to take and form a path with this color. So by coming from here, down through here, going off the page, coming over here and connecting. You can see I've formed a path of yellow. Very cool. Now I'm going to take a little gold, interlock the gold with the same path. Now the next thing I want to do is to come in with some cool colors. So I'm going to start with a light color, which is manganese blue. And manganese blue has got some yellow in it. When I bump into this gold, we're going to see a little bit of beautiful yellow green. Ooh, I love that. See, it's almost the same yellow green that's there. Now remember, this is your underpainting. So save some whites if you can. And we're going to come back and add the darks. For now, this is just simply a, a really fun way to get some of those lovely soft colors. Now, I wouldn't mind adding a few purples. There's some lovely purples in here. So I'm going to take a little permanent magenta, and I'm just going to put this in with my blue. I'm going to avoid the yellow, because purple and yellow, it's a good way to make mud. <laughs> so if I keep the purple pretty much in my blues, I should be fine. And the next thing I want to do is a little color sanding. Now this is very fun stuff. So if I take and just lay this down here, now the surface has to be wet. So I'm going to make sure that this is wet. And then I'm going to take some colors that we've already used. See there's some blue, so out of this blue I'm going to come in and 
go right over my stencil. I thought these leaves might look kind of nice. And then over here, I'm going to get a little purple. And we'll just do a little purple over here too. Oh, fun. Okay, let's do another little right here. Where the purple is, I'm going to come out from the purple with my purple pencil. And then where the blue is, I'm going to put some of this blue. That's probably all I need. And I usually like to do this in threes. So I think what I'll do is I'll do a little up here. And just to be absolutely sure this is wet enough, I always like to take a little fine mist and spray into my color sanding. And you can see it gets a little darker when you do this. So when you can see that it's getting a little darker, you know you've done the right thing. Now the gauze is really fun. Now I never lay this down and let it look like a piece of gauze. What I do is I take my scissors after I've got it open. And you can see how big it is. It's a pretty large piece of gauze. And then what I do is I stretch it. I start with my finger here and another, usually another finger over here, and stretch this until it becomes an interesting pattern of lines. And I love to do this because it almost looks like the <laughs> some of the vines that you might see in the back of the vineyard. Now another little trick, I just remembered this so I better get busy and do it. If you take some French ultramarine blue and you paint it around your leaves, you're going to get a beautiful outline. So I'm going to come in and just do a little bit of this French ultramarine blue. Because remember these leaves were yellow. So they definitely need some kind of dark behind them. I'm also going to paint this on top of the gauze. So let's come in here. Try to get this rascal. Blend it with that. Now you don't want this to look like a stencil, all the edges too much, just sticking out. So I'm going to lose some of these edges. So they look like they're supposed to be there. <laughs> and some of this I can hit with the sprayer too. So I'm planning to do some spraying on this. The next thing I want to do is a little gauze. I always like to have the gauze kind of meet so I'm going to put this piece of gauze over here and stretch it down to meet this piece of gauze. So we'll see what we can do about maybe stretching a few lines up here and pulling these lines out to the edge of the paper. And then using my flat brush, if I again pick up these lines, so you have to press them down and make them bond to the paper. So I usually just pull it right over the top of these lines. Now I'm going to do one more and I'm going to pick them up here and go off up here. So let's see how this works. We're going to start in here. Now if you just pull this you get one big line. So the trick is to pull it, take it to another area. See I've got two fingers holding it. Now I've got three. Whoa, that's good. And then I'm going to grab it here and pull it up here. And see what I'm trying to do is open this up so it becomes interesting lines. I don't want it to look like a piece of gauze and I don't want it to look like one straight line. I'm trying to get some interesting linear shapes.
Now there's only certain colors that will transfer these lines and that's usually mineral based colors. So French ultramarine blue is one. Another really beautiful one is manganese blue. Manganese is part of my picture too so I may just try to do that too. So we've got quite a bit going on here. We've got some lovely lines carrying through. We can still see the images from our napkins. And you can see we have some leaves that are going to give us, just give you a little peek here. See how much color? Ooh, it's going to be pretty. Look at that. But they have to stay on till they dry. So don't rush this. And then I'm going to take this copper spray, and we have this product for sale here. It's by Krylon, and it comes in bronze and copper and gold and silver. Oh, I just love it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm basically going to spray this into my lines. And I'm also going to spray it over here to, to show off that edge of the leaf. And maybe over here, next to that. So see, I'm, I'm kind of tracking it here. And it wouldn't hurt to spray a little more here to capture that edge of the leaf. So now what we have to do is take a little time, wait for this to dry. It seems to be drying very quickly. So hopefully we'll be able to come back and you'll get to see what this all looks like. This is always a little bit like Christmas morning. Just wondering what is going to be under all this good stuff. Ooh. And I like it when we save a little white of the paper. Yes, nice job. So we'll lift off the gauze, lift this up, and ta-da! And see, whether you come around with the French ultramarine blue, which gives you these wonderful dark edges, see all those kind of outlined dark edges, or whether you come in with the spray, that also gives you a nice clean edge. Hey, this looks pretty good. You always wonder, when you first start looking at it, you go, well, I don't know, did I do the right thing? <laughs> but I kind of like it. I think we're going to be fine. So now comes the real design part, where it's important that you think about controlling some of the edges. So I'm going to come in probably using some of my Antwerp blue, also using some of my permanent magenta, some of the colors that are already in the picture. So I'm going to start with the Antwerp, and I'm going to come in I'll probably fill in this corner here. And I can paint a little bit on the napkin too if I want to. And then I can paint up to and around the leaf to pop it out a bit. And that's really important to kind of form this path of dark that leads you through the picture. And I think it would be cool to start in here now and sort of find our way to the bottom of the picture. So now I'm going to start following the lines, filling in some of the areas. Now it's hard to paint on paper because it, it runs. It doesn't do what you think it's going to do. But you just have to get over it. <laughs> it's, it's the way it is. So I'm going to come in here and follow that edge to the bottom. Then I'm going to come in with some permanent magenta. Coming around here. Now I don't like to leave edges to, to form a hard edge. So by coming in with my brush and losing that edge you can see I can give myself a really nice lost edge. And if you 
want, that's a, even a good place to add a little salt. Now I'm going to come up here. We've got this edge, this edge coming around. I think I'll come around here too. And around the corner here. You can see this is going to be hard to lose the edge here because I'm painting on paper. Just going to break it up a little bit. Again, I'm going to lose the edge. Maybe throw a little salt in there too. Now I'm going to come up here, bookend that same dark in here and over here. Now it's going to be hard to paint when you bump into your spray. The metallic spray doesn't allow you to uh, paint, but just do the best you can. Here I wanted this edge. See how I can paint right on top of this without losing those images? It's a wonderful thing. Here I can pick up some of the purples. Now I'm going to pick up some of the darks over here. Come in and find that edge. I'm going to also combine it with a little purple. Back it into our Antwerp. Wet our brush, shake it out, touch it on a towel, come in and push back that edge. So we're just going to get a lovely lost edge. Good. A lot of times when I'm pushing back the edge, I'll put a little salt in there. So you can see down here, the transition between the white and the dark are those little white spots you get from the salt. That is a beautiful transition. Now here's another case where I want to paint around the leaf to pop it out. But I'm also painting in an area that is sprayed. So I'm going to get some resist. I like it. Come up here and paint. You can see it allows me to make the lines. That's kind of fun. I should be able to get quite a bit darker up here. But mostly I want to keep finding some of the lines and losing some of the lines. So here's another case where I could come in here, find this edge, go around my leaf shape, and then wet my brush, shake it out, and just lose this edge into my color sanding. Over here, because this is purple, I'm just going to paint purple over the color sanding. And because all my colors are transparent, this allows me to paint over this. And see, you don't lose it. It's still there. It's just a transparent color over it. Oh, I love that. Love that. So now you can see we're moving in, coming down through here. Now I want to pick up some of these edges over here. So I'm going to paint right over the, the gauze area here. Come out on the other side. Now we're in a sprayed area. So I can't get much more than just the suggestion that this is going to be a shape coming down. And I'm happy with that. Because I really like what happens when the spray kind of obliterates things and ties it all together. I can stop now and show you some other tricks. One of the things that's very cool are using this to do some transitional lines. So for example, down here, where I have a light area going into a dark area, if I want to, I can put this mesh down. And this is a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser that I've cut into a little section. And now I'm going to use this just to lift out a little bit of this light. See how nice that is? It's sort of like the salt. It's another way to do a transition where you have a light area going into a dark area. I'm trying to find another area. This is so busy I don't really need a lot of it. This could be a good one here where I can lift Mr. Clean is so powerful it will even lift 
that spray, believe it or not. See? <laughs> so we got a little bit there. I always like to do things at least three times. So I think if we were to add this right here, that might make a nice transition too. There. Oh, that does look nice. Now, we've got so much happening here. We don't need a lot more. But one of the things I have to show you, because this is just too cool, and that is to take a piece of acetate. This is something you can buy at a Staples or one of those stores. And then what you need to do is find a guide so you can draw a circle. And I'm using my permanent pen for this. Now I'm just going to cut in. When I get to the circle, I'm going to cut my way around. And be sure to make this circle a size that works with your picture. You don't want it too big. You don't want it too small. This seems to be about the right size. So now I'm going to come over here decide where I would like to have some of these. And again, I don't have many areas left. I guess I was thinking right in here I would do a few. And this is how simple it is. Make sure your Mr. Clean Magic Eraser is damp and you just simply do that. That is how easy it is. Now if you put one on top of that, it will look like it's on top of it. The other one will go behind. And be sure you get most of that water out of there because if it's too wet, it'll run right under the plastic. That's not good either. But the last one you do, when you put it on top of other circles, it'll look like it's on top. See how cool that is? So with a few grapes there, and those can of course be toned if you want the color to be a different color. They're always going to be white because it lifts back to the white. But if you want these to be a color, you just simply come in and paint them. This is a little Windsor yellow. I could also use a little gold. It's always nice if you think you need it to put just a little bit of color on these. The ones in the back I make a little darker, the ones in the front try to keep that nice soft whiteness about it. Well, here we are. The picture is now finished and there's a lot of things I'm pleased with. I love the way you can paint over your color sanding without losing the image. Of course it becomes pushed back but you can see it doesn't get destroyed. And that's because we sprayed it carefully with the mister. Another thing that bears repeating is that just because we glued this with Yes Paste that doesn't make it archival. Had we glued this with the matte medium or varnish, we would be done. It would be archival. But with the matte medium and varnish, we would have had marks all over that were caused by the glue. The acrylic glue causes a resist. Because we use the Yes Paste, you can see there's absolutely no resist anywhere. To me, it's like a miracle. So now, if you just take a minute, and go outside, make sure the wind is blowing in a safe direction, and carefully spray this with a UV protected acrylic spray. And when you do it, don't do it like this. Don't come in, well, you should put it upright to spray it. But just for a sake of demonstration, don't start spraying here and and do it continuously. Because when you get to the end, you're building up the spray. And then when you get back here, you're building it up. And conceivably, you could have drips running down the side when you're done. So the proper way to spray is to come in from the side, begin your spray here, and then release it. So it would be pssst, release, pssst, release, pssst, release. And you would do the entire side. Then I generally turn it on this side and do it again. I do up to four coats. And this varnish comes in either a matte or a gloss. It's made by Krylon. 
Remember, it's also giving you the UV protection, and it's well worth the few minutes it takes to do that. But I think I've basically covered everything I wanted to show you about finding the edges, trying to pull in your cruciform by starting on the edge, interlocking, coming out the other edge, and then a few transitional shapes using the mesh or the salt. If you want to lift out a few shapes, you can use the Mr. Clean and the acrylic. So I hope you have a good time with this project. Good luck.